Hey producers, mastering is considered by many to be one of the most mysterious aspects of production. Historically, mastering was the process of taking a studio multi-track that would be transferred to stereo tape, which could then be bought at record stores. Mastering engineers would make small adjustments to the recording to improve the sound and make sure all the hard work of the musicians and producers would translate to the finished product. Starting in the 90s, magnetic tape was replaced with digital signal, which opened up the door to the way we produce today. We have flexible software plugins capable of much higher sound quality and much more control than anyone could have imagined with tape. What's with the history lesson, cut man? It's important to understand the history because while the tools have changed, our job remains the same. Get the recording sounding as good as possible on the finished media. So today we're gonna to be using just two effects, a master limiter to set the loudness and an equalizer to adjust our frequencies. Master limiter. The goal here is to have the limiter compressing our peaks, but not compressing every single moment of the track. That's gonna to lead to that over compressed sound. Here, I'll give you an example of what that might sound like. You can see now the limiter is just working 24 seven on the entire track, and that's what's gonna make it sound kind of like squashed and not so, not so great. So this is pretty good. We're compressing our peaks of our drums, but not crushing the entire track. Now that the limiter is set, the track kind of takes on a new quality. Fine details are easier to hear, and loud elements like drums are more controlled. Next, we use an equalizer to fine tune the track. Parametric equalizer. Here's some EQ tips. If you're getting some distortion, try rolling off a little bit of your bass or low end. Because the limiter is bringing out all the details, if the bass sounded good in the mix, we probably don't need to boost it in the master. A common problem with a lot of tracks is sounding thin or muddy. If a track sounds a little thin, we can boost the low mids to give it more meat and body. If it sounds muddy, do the opposite. Give a little cut and thin that area out. If the track is harsh, you can make a steep cut around 4K. This is a particularly painful range. If the track sounds dull, a little boost around 6K can be nice. And if you want a little sparkle, a wide boost around 16K is usually pretty good. I do this on almost all my tracks because it just always sounds nice. Now that we've got our EQ set, we want to revisit our master limiter because the gain could have changed a little bit because of our EQing. Oh yeah, it looks like it got a little bit louder. So let me, let me pull this back. All right, that sounded really good. Now the last thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure our output is set to negative 0.7. Now I know that seems kind of arbitrary. When we upload our song to platforms like Spotify and YouTube, which will naturally compress the audio, it's gonna make it a little bit louder. Now if you've ever had a track that sounds different after exporting it or uploading it than it does when you're working on it, it's almost certainly because there's clipping or it's too loud on the final master channel. Wow, cut man, my track is sounding great, but aren't there more mastering effects that I can use? There sure are, but we're gonna have to save them for another video. Mastering is an entire world in and of itself, and I'd love to cover more topics on this channel. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you have questions, hit me up and I'll do my best to reply. I hope this video helps you on your quest to become a better producer. Thanks for watching.